you have to know that our beer cell is from 1882 and closed down at the end of 2002 and I took over the brewery in 2005 to revive uh, the traditional Lambic beers and safeguard them for the next couple of generations. So we've been doing this step by step of course. Uh, I started this as a hobby. I had my main job in Telco uh, when I started without beer cell, then quit my job 2007, uh, started working full time for the brewery unpaid, only started paying myself a salary in 2009 and then step by step being building up first employee till we've uh, reached a certain amount in volume I think before closure of the brewery uh, there were about 250 hectoliters of uh, beer in sale uh, whereas nowadays we do to uh, 2500 hectoliters um, thanks to this we were able to invest of course uh, in the production so we've been building out the main building with uh, wooden barrel capacity and uh, we have over 3000 hectoliters of lambic in stock uh, nowadays uh, on the three floors of the brewery um, besides that in the building that we're standing now where we have the brewery visits where we have our shop where we have our offices this building was only uh, acquired in 2013 so this was kind of a phase of uh, expanding the brewery so we have a warm dry place and we have the cold production area uh, but now we have uh, some nice challenges ahead because uh, the brewery has been launched again and we are active on the market again but now we want to relaunch the old bar of the brewery so we, uh, that's our project for uh, next year 2021 after covid we want to reopen the old bar of the brewery at the closure of the brewery 2002 it uh, it closed down as well they sold the building and it became a flower shop and a few years ago we were able to acquire the building again and now we are doing works to get back the old uh, parts of uh, the old elements of uh, of the bar i'll show you later on uh, we got a nice uh, old tiles from uh, from in the past that we're uncovering uh, step by step uh, and the whole interior. Our slogan is beer traditions reborn and we are a brewery from 1882 but the company is from 2005 so we're not claiming that we're uh, we're only old uh, dating back I mean it was four generations the same family the van der Velden family and they shut down the brewery and I started the brewery up again but from scratch I, I worked here with the old brewmaster 77 years old to take over his knowledge uh, the first couple of years uh, but then now the old brewmaster passed away uh, and I mean I'm doing the brewery in with my background I'm uh, I'm a master, I have a master in uh, economics with IT management and so nothing to do with beer initially besides drinking of course enjoying beers in the bar uh, but then uh, I started uh, studying uh, brewery uh, uh, production uh, in the evening school in Ghent uh, for a few years to take over at Beersel and based on uh, my background I also modernized the brewery of course uh, due to the uh, marketing aspects that I learned about the IT I think for traditional uh, lambic breweries and any traditional product you need to use modern thinking as well to move your products to the future otherwise at a certain moment of in time it will be outdated and nobody will consume these products anymore so we're also innovative with uh, the beers that we make we make like uh, infused lambics uh, so this is traditional lambic lambic of normally two years or three years old that we use from big fooders uh, and that lambic actually leaves some some room because uh, for other flavors because that lambic is very subtle very very smooth it takes a long time for lambic to age and uh, get to the perfect flavor on uh, big fooders but that allows us to bring in some other flavors and this way we were able to bring in flavors through infusion of other cultures and so we're blending the culture of the traditional lambic with other cultures and uh, uh, people that would otherwise not drink a traditional adegus for example they would maybe drink uh, lambic with uh, Earl Grey tea and uh, because they're used to drinking Earl Grey tea uh, they're not used to drink lambic and so by discovering a beer with all great tea they start to adapt to the flavors of uh, the lambic and at the end of the day they're all enjoying uh, all the goose so it's a labor of love uh, 
from, from your side. Yeah, you I mean, this is, I call this, this is my life. I mean, it's uh, not only about passion, it's not only work, it's not a hobby. It's my whole life is surrounded, uh, it, it's integrated in the brewery. My kids as well, my wife as well, she works for the brewery. So, I mean, uh, the kids, they come uh, and they ask, uh, oh, can we go to the brewery? Can we? And they, they run around, they check uh, the wooden barrels with me on the leakage and stuff like that. So, they like to be here. Of course, uh, once they have to start working, they prefer to go home and play. <laughs> <laughs> And one of your unusual beers, and one of my favorites, is the Great Walnut. Today. Yeah. How did you come about that? Well, I studied in 98, 99 for a year in Italy. And uh, I made some good friends in Italy. And uh, so in Italy, they have the tradition of making liquors at home. And one of these liquors is called uh, Nocino. And Nocino is a liquor based on green walnuts. And uh, so I learned about making this because I love drinking green walnuts, especially, uh, sorry, uh, Nocino, especially when it was aged for like 10, 20 years. Uh, the flavors are amazing, but only from the uh, homemade uh, production, of course. And um, we started making this at home, uh, my wife and I. Uh, but then at a certain point in time I said, what's the use of making liquor at home? We are hardly drinking any liquor in Belgium. We are always drinking beer. So let's try something with the green walnuts uh, and the lambic. And so at my parents' uh, garden orchard, they have uh, Scherbexi cherry trees. But next to the Scherbexi cherry trees, there are uh, walnut trees. And so there we pick the walnuts, uh, wash them, cut them in pieces and put them on the lambic. And, uh, actually have a kind of extract of the walnuts. The only thing is that with walnuts, green walnuts, they're very, very bitter. It's uh, not a subtle bitter flavor and it's very sharp and hard. And uh, so if you put it on Lambic, in the first few months it's undrinkable because it's so hard. So we leave it for at least 10 months uh, together on tank uh, so that the uh, bitterness can oxidize. And once the bitterness of the walnuts oxidizes, they, they, they match uh, nicely together. So, but that's, uh, I mean, we are not into producing lambics with all kinds of fruits. That's not our thing, but we are into innovative uh, thinking on beers and uh, green walnuts are not really used in beers in general. So I think we were one of the first uh, bringing out a beer with uh, green walnuts and a lambic beer that can age and uh, evolve on bottles. So. And you mentioned Earl Grey tea, we've seen that. And of course you've been innovative with your beer box uh, yeah. where people can yeah. serve. Tell us about that and what else is next on the innovative lineup? Yeah, I mean, uh, the beer box, of course, it's uh, a project that I've wanted to do since uh, already 10 years, uh, but we've been looking for the right technology and that was very hard. Uh, the thing is with Lambic, we are not pasteurizing our Lambic, so we take Lambic from the wooden barrels and when I started uh, without beer, so I reopened the brewery, we had people, mainly the elder generation, that came with uh, plastic bottles or jugs and they asked uh, can we have a couple of liters of lambic and I mean opening a wooden barrel of lambic just to uh, take out a couple of liters and doing this every week in the end you oxidize the, the remaining beer on the wooden barrel and that beer isn't that good anymore to drink so we said this is not the way forward we cannot do it like this because we will damage the barrel we will uh, destroy the beer that is on there so we decided to put that beer on uh, bagging boxes and then selling sell bagging boxes to the customers instead of uh, filling up uh, the recipients that they brought uh, to the brewery um, the issue with regular bagging boxes, it's not about the bagging boxes, it's about the Lambic. The Lambic still uh, continues to produce a little bit of carbon dioxide. And uh, step by step, the regular bagging boxes, they would swell. And uh, due to the carbon dioxide uh, building up in the bag, and so we've done different tests. Eh? We, what we've done, uh, of course, for these uh, the small amounts of uh, bagging boxes, we just kept them cold and we sold them cold to our consumers that were coming here. And so there was no inflation of the box, but th we were not able to ship these uh, through distributors, importers. Uh, so you only had to pick it up at the brewery and bring it home and put it in your fridge. Um, 
whereas we've tried with filtration of yeast, we've tried with pasteurization, we've tried with uh, a lot of uh, packaging technologies as well, even bags, for example, that were used for mushrooms on, uh, on can bag in box or uh, yeast uh, on bag in boxes. Uh, and all these technologies, they were not uh, giving the desired result. And uh, then the last uh, thing that we tried was a new technology uh, that we're working with a company. We're only, uh, there are only three companies in the world that uh, have access at the moment to these bags because they're still in kind of uh, final phase before a uh, full launch. Um, and uh, but we've been working for over four years now with that company four years before we launched the bag so we launched in 2018 pressure resistant bags these bags can cope with 2.5 bars of pressure and um, thanks to this we can ship flat lambic that slowly builds up some carbonation all over the world uh, and that's what we're doing now we send it to japan china uh, the united states uh, but we sell it locally to to the drinks and everything whereas before nobody could buy that only if you would come on saturday mornings at the brewery so this is quite an innovation and together with that technology we've launched innovative innovative lambic beers the infused range and we started with uh, rose petals actually uh, a lambic infused with rose petals to give the um, flowerful aromas to the to the beer and uh, with the idea of uh, making a beer that would uh, be uh, more pleasant uh, to enjoy for uh, the Asian market as well and for uh, people that are not into lambics and uh, discover lambics in another way and this was such a success uh, the rose lambic that we continue producing the rose lambic since uh, since then and then we've started uh, infusing with Earl Grey with Lapsang Swashong which is a smoked Chinese tea but now we have uh, lambic with pine buds uh, that we uh, call it our, we call it our winter lambic you have the the pine trees flavor in the lambic it's really amazing flavor for this kind of uh, period you immediately think about Christmas when you drink that beer and uh, but with juniper leaves uh, with juniper uh, berries um, and uh, like from the Geneva in Belgium as well uh, orange blossom we have uh, yeah all kinds of uh, oolong roasted tea we sometimes even do like with our Japanese importer they have a uh, tea company next to their beer importing company so they shipped over Japanese tea and we shipped them back the beer on beer boxes with uh, with the Japanese tea only for their Japanese market so I mean it, it brings other ways uh, possibilities to play around with uh, with traditional lambic and uh, make it more accessible for another culture to try discover enjoy lambic with the hopes in the end that uh, these people will, will also discover traditional other goose and other creek because that's the aim of the whole job that we are doing here is safeguarding traditional lambic beers for the next couple of generations i want that our grandchildren are still able to drink traditional lambic beers when they're at age now that uh, covid has hit all that export market has dried up or how, what are you doing what are your tactics now in the age of covid Hi, uh, COVID is a bit uh, special. Uh, we during lockdown, it was a very hard uh, period in spring 2020. Um, but uh, during that time, we launched a web shop, and uh, thanks to the web shop, we had some extra income. Um, of course, uh, I mean that's mainly Belgian market and a bit European market, um, and then. Uh, we saw that in the month of June and July we're picking up again. Uh, we're selling in Belgium also in the supermarket. So thanks to the supermarket, we could keep uh, basic sales in Belgium, of course. And uh, I think people also discovered that uh, they can enjoy lambic beers at home at the price of a regular beer that they drink in the bar. So I think people have started finding uh, the pleasure of uh, drinking traditional lambics uh, more at home as well. We're doing a lot of these small changes, uh, some things, sometimes things nobody sees. We've uh, changed all the buildings uh, to three times 400 uh, volts in electricity instead of uh, 230 volts. Nobody sees that, but it costed me 10,000 euros. Uh, but we're doing all these kind of works now 
to prepare for when COVID is over that we can really go forward and uh, push the last things to open beer house and uh, the other plants uh, after beer house we want to put a new brew house here on site uh, we'll integrate the house of the old brewmaster who passed away a few years ago and uh, we'll integrate that in the building of the brewery we already got uh, consent uh, for the change of, uh, of uh, destination of the building and uh, so it's just a matter of time but of course it all costs a lot of money and uh, so we first want to open the bar beer house and uh, once that is running we can look into investing in uh, the new brew house on site so this is actually the uh, the logo that represents it means that there's lambic of uh, our beer on this uh, wooden barrel and this logo represents uh, in an easy way the castle of beer the castle of beer which is part of our uh, logo um, so we use that uh, as a symbol for lambic um, if you look at wooden barrels you'll see that uh, some wooden barrels are not uh, carrying this logo because they don't have lambic if they have cherry lambic or they have for example our Bersalis triple uh, oak aged on the wooden barrels they won't carry this uh, logo these barrels here these are the oldest uh, small barrels of the brewery they're between 60 and 120 years old we call them Pepin pipes, old old pipes, and these old pipes, uh, they were actually port barrels, but they were port barrels like 60 to 120 years ago, uh, when uh, the port wine was shipped to the harbors of Bruges and Antwerp, and um, it was shipped to these harbors to fill in bottle. And once these uh, barrels were empty, some of these barrels were shipped back to Portugal, and they put balls of cheese in there and then they sold the cheese that was coming out of these barrels after the long boat trip uh, as uh, Flemish cheese in Portugal and uh, soaked in, uh, in port wine. And um, all the barrels stayed behind and these barrels have been uh, purchased uh, by Lambic breweries. A lot of these Lambic breweries are defunct and don't exist anymore. These barrels have been passed from uh, one brewery to the other brewery. So they have a lot of history. Like you see, it's a, a barrel from Van Malderen, uh, for example. I mean, uh, they don't exist anymore. So these, uh, these barrels, uh, they also give a quite distinct the flavor uh, to Lambic, they're more expressive, they produce a little bit more acidic acidity, um, but also a very nice fruity flavor, it's full bodied. The Lambic on these barrels is uh, very fast uh, in uh, fermentation as well, whereas on other barrels it takes more time, but these barrels are a bit more rough in flavor, whereas the other ones are more mild in flavor. Yeah. To make our regular goes uh, of our beer, so we always make a blend of the small barrels and the big barrels because we have fooders here uh, from 40 hectoliters to 120 hectoliters and then we have these smaller 600, 650 liter barrels and we always blend small barrels with big barrels because the lambic on big barrels is more subtle, more smooth and the lambic on small barrels is more aggressive, gives a punch, so we take the, the very smooth balanced basic flavor of the of the food or lambic and we bring in punch in uh, in the goose with uh, with the small barrels that we blend in and then the new beer you've just released this year uh, the old pipes our pepper yeah other pepper so we've done that in 2017 and we've done that again uh, now which is the blend of only this type of barrel uh, these barrels here, these are the Mimuis that we acquired in 2013 from France, uh, from uh, used for Chateauneuf du Pape, for example. Uh, you see these barrels here, this is uh, Bersalis Cadet Oak Aged, and uh, we have barrels here with uh, Bersalis Triple Oak Aged. And so the Bersalis Triple was the first beer that we launched in 2005, um, because when I started with uh, the brewery, I mean, I had my own money that I invested in, uh, in the project, but uh, that was not enough. So I wanted to get a loan from the bank, but no bank wanted to lend me the money. 
because it was too risky, you uh, wanted to reproduce an old beer that only the elder generation was drinking, there was no income for the next three years because it takes at least three years for production of the lambics to be able to produce another goose in another creek. And so I decided to produce a uh, triple, uh, a strong blonde. At the time in 2005, we were drinking a lot of triples as well in Belgium and with my friends, we were enjoying triples. So I launched uh, a triple under the name Bersalis. And Bersalis is the, is the old medieval name of Bersel. And thanks to the sales of Bersalis Triple, where we were able to get some money in, the bank would say, okay, now you have financial uh, income, so you can pay back uh, rent and capital. And uh, thanks to that uh, money coming in, uh, we could invest in the traditional Lambic production because we had to build up our stocks of Lambic on wooden barrels and uh, invest in the building um, to keep the Lambic barrels. And uh, so now we are also aging since uh, probably 2014. We are aging Lambic, uh, we are aging Bersalis triple on uh, wooden barrels. And uh, because you had the innovation in the more modern uh, breweries uh, all over the world uh, that they're putting their beer on, uh, on barrel and uh, bring some kind of special flavors out of it. And I said, okay, with the knowledge that we have built up on Lambic beer, let's try to make an a, a wooden barrel aged uh, top fermenting beer but inspired by uh, how we work. And so we treat the barrels in the same way as we treat our Lambic. We put a beer on there, we do not inoculate, but we clean our barrels uh, very well. We don't, we, for Lambic as well, we always clean our barrels. Every time we put new water in, the barrel is cleaned. And we put a beer on, uh, on these barrels and uh, the beer actually ferments a second time on these barrels, um, but it takes a long time. So we, the last batch, we left it 22 months on the wooden barrels, but we see that about 25% of the microorganisms that we have in uh, Lambic is also present in our Bersalis triple O cage. We have uh, lactic fermentation going on in Bersalis triple O cage. We have uh, wi uh, the wild fermentation of Brettanomyces is going on in uh, on the Bersalis triple. So it makes it a really unique beer. You cannot describe it as a triple anymore. You cannot describe it as a goose, uh, but it's kind of some, somewhere in between, but it's 10.5 AB, ABV on bottle. And it's, uh, and you, you, it, it, when you taste it, it tastes like seven ABV or something because it's so refreshing to drew, uh, due to the sourness and the complexity, all the fruity characters uh, that, uh, that uh, microorganisms from the Lambic brought in. So that's, uh, yeah. yeah. I really like it. It's uh, unusual. Yeah, unusual, beer. kind of unique uh, in wooden barrel aged beers. Eh? People that try it and they say, Oak Age, oh, I've so, had so many Oak Age, but one, once I try this, it's like, this shouldn't be called Oak Age because it's different than Oak Age. But I mean, we just put it on oak and uh, that's it. But due to the organism that are here in this building, they also inoculate this beer and uh, make it very unique. So the popularity of this beer helped the basis and kept you going to be able to have time to produce the lambics. And yeah, the right. And, and we see, of course, that, I mean, worldwide, we are known nowadays for Odd Bersel again, eh, for the other girls, the other creek and all the other Lambic beers that we make. Uh, Bersalis uh, was the beer from the region when we launched. People said, oh, we go to brewery Bersalis because that was the only beer that we had. And they called us by Bersalis instead of Odd Bersel. Because only a few year, uh, years later, in 2007, we were able to launch uh, the other girls. And um, step by step, we've seen the evolution, uh, the shift in uh, interest the main brand has become out Bersel again because that brand is more international whereas Bersal is there's so many top fermenting beers in the world so we have to compete with a lot of uh, big breweries uh, with big brands and that's hard for a small brewery like us whereas with out Bersel we're unique we have our unique position in the market and uh, so uh, due to the innovation that we do we are also different than other Lambic producers uh, and uh, this has more visibility in the outer market, in the worldwide markets. But uh, we have a lot of consumers of Bersalis in the region and uh, in Belgium. That's our main market for Bersalis. Yeah. That's the old brew house. Oh, this is the old brew house. Yeah. 
the, these are aluminum tanks and that's the reason why when I started with uh, Art Beersel that we were not able to start brewing here on site before closure of the brewery 50% of the beer was produced here and 50% was produced outside according to the recipe of Art Beersel and when I started here I brewed here to take over the knowledge of the old brewmaster but then I couldn't use the installation to produce beer for uh, for the market because they're in aluminum and you cannot make beer wort in aluminum uh, vessels anymore. Uh, this brewery installation was put here in the 60s with second-hand material um, and I mean because they didn't invest and that's one of the reasons why they closed as well they didn't invest for the future so it's always the old style and this was not allowed anymore if it would have been copper kettles we could have still uh, produced lambic we would have been producing lambic here now but you see behind uh, you have the wall here and behind the wall that's the house of the old brewmaster so in the future we'll integrate his house here and uh, I think we'll integrate the entrance, the house, and uh, this part here, and the top part here where we'll put the cool ship probably, and uh, we'll put a complete new brew house here. That's the future, but let's say five years from now. Yeah, this is our food room. Huh? So we have, uh, uh, this room was put here. This is the old attic, and you actually see we've been doing transformations at this room because uh, we've put a complete new uh, roof on top of the on, uh, on the brewery here, and this was like a roof going up, down, up, down, three roofs like this. And we've kept the highest point. We increased the outer walls, and we put a big insulated roof on top of the brewery. And thanks to this, we increased the space here to put big barrels. Um, so the barrels here. Uh, these barrels where I'm standing these are containing 120 hectoliters of lambic and the smaller ones over there there's there's 60 hectoliters of lambic we have about uh, a bit more than 3,000 hectoliters of lambic here in uh, Beersel on, on wooden barrels this one room contains 1,500 hectoliters so this is uh, almost half of our volume on these barrels and thanks to the investment in these barrels we were able to produce other beers than just Audigus and Audi Creek because when I started I only produced Audigus and Audi Creek and then I started uh, with the green walnut uh, to try but that was small batches uh, and uh, but we did not have enough lambic to produce other beers I know the market was asking for another goes or another thing, but our main goal was safeguarding traditional other goes and other creek. And we want to have always other goes and other creek available. Thanks to these uh, boys here, we were able to have more lambic that we started using for the infusions. These big barrels, they give very, very mild uh, lambic. And thanks to the lambic, uh, it leaves room for the infusion. So we started making our uh, mainly our infusions with this kind of lambic here. Our is 13 kilometers away from the city center of Brussels. 13 kilometers, that's nothing. But uh, we, we are at the border. I mean, uh, the whole lambic region is, uh, is uh, all here, Seine Valley and uh, Payotta Land and Brussels itself, of course. Eh? We are not in Brussels and that's more kind of political, uh, I would say, because we are, we are in Flanders and Brussels is, around, is surrounded uh, by Flanders. Uh, but we have the stories from people that were, I mean, all the farms are here and uh, there are no farms, almost no farms in Brussels anymore. So people used to go with the horse and the carriage and they left early in the morning. Uh, but they loaded up everything on the carriage and they slept on the carriage and the horse drove them to Brussels because it took them uh, quite, a, quite a while to go to Brussels. Uh, but then they sold the cheeses, the beer and everything on the market in Brussels. Even the Scharbeek cherries, for example, the name Scharbeek is from uh, Scharbeek in Brussels, but the cherries were coming from this area. Why? Because uh, they told the brewers if you want to make good Creek beer, you have to buy the cherries on the market in Scharbeek. But the cherries were brought from this region to the market in Scharbeek. So you had to go to Scharbeek to buy the good cherries, but they're coming from the region here, of course. But that's where the market was. So, I mean, uh, it was a it, bit of a dilemma everything, everything is linked with each other. Uh, this room was an empty room. There were some old uh, yeah. aluminum tanks here. 
uh, but for the rest it was all all empty we started putting fooders here in 2009 for the first time five fooders and then uh, added two more fooders added six fooders 2013 we added the three fooders over there so we have 16 fooders on the ground floor here about 40 hectoliters every fooder uh, and then we started installing tanks so we have uh, uh, some fruit tanks here uh, in the back uh, with 24 hectoliter tanks with uh, uh, filters inside of them so we uh, we put green walnuts on there we put a, there's one with green walnuts and there's one with the scarabex and cherries on there in your uh, way of saying that we use really all the space that we have yes Wow. We use all the space that we have. <laughs> Over time, we've been investing a lot of money in the whole building. I mean, reinforcing forcing foundations, new sewer system and all these kind of things. The new roof, uh, the project on the second floor, that was a huge project, costed half a million euros uh, for that project. I mean, we've invested in this building because we want to stay on the original site of the brewery uh, with all the charm. I mean, you guys have gone through one room from one room to the other room and it's nice to just open a door and see what's behind the door otherwise you're in just one big building and you see everything and say okay that's it now this is a discovery i mean it's like discovering goose you need to take your time and you need to discover all the flavors that are in the beer you cannot just sip at it it's like oh it tastes like this no it's very complex so you need your time and this represents a bit uh, the same as a product this part here the entrance itself was owned by the old brewmaster uh, this was his garage this was the entrance and this was used to be his house and so the building where we have the shop uh, was linked to the ground in the back of the brewery and so we had no access no outer wall giving access to public domain and uh, so we were squeezed in between all the buildings and thanks to the purchase of the uh, the shop we were able to have the field in the back uh, and now with the old brewmaster's house we have this so the aim is actually to change i think we're going to take down the house and then put a new building from the shop to the beer house in the future for the uh, to put a new uh, brewing installation here so this is the beer house here it was closed it became a flower shop and after a few years they covered uh, the old tiles with the gray paint because i mean they're damaged but for me this is the old part of the of the of the bar we're not going to open just a bar next to the brewery we're going to open the old bar next to the brewery and so we're trying to recover the old elements of uh, of that bar so we're almost there just a few square meters uh, more and uh, we uh, we will have achieved something we've tried 10 different ways of removing this and uh, it took us some time to find it out but we were stubborn enough to still want that like, old front uh, coming out if you look on top for example as well there was a panel in front of it we removed it and we rediscovered the old uh, sign of the brewery on uh, on top of there this floor was actually covered with tiles and we broke out the tiles to let the old floor reappear okay it's a bit damaged on some places but uh, it looks it looks great this is the old setting we have the old uh, wooden panels from the walls and uh, we've already uh, uh, took, taken the varnish off uh, but uh, this is the original uh, from the brewery these are our uh, tanks for blending normally uh, but we got wort in that was fermenting already uh, we couldn't pump it over on uh, small barrels uh, so it's it ferments here on the tank and then it goes inside uh, in 10 days it goes on wooden barrels uh, but uh, fermentation has kicked in quite well this year The cherry orchard, yeah. So what we want to do in the future when the beer house is open uh, and it will be kind of self-service uh, where you can also pick like a meatball or a piece of bread or some cheese, uh, local uh, white cheese or and uh, other things and we'll, we'll put kind of uh, picnic baskets 
and uh, so people can take the picnic basket and come in the orchard and uh, we'll put some tables here but there will be a, probably also a blanket and you can just sit down in the orchard and uh, enjoy the bottle of beer with some food and everything so that's uh, all the plans for uh, next year so right now where are you sourcing your scarbex cherries so we buy them at the moment the scarbex cherries because we don't have enough um, production um, but uh, the aim is in, uh, to have in a few years enough cherries here. This is our test project only actually. Huh? Uh, so this is uh, uh, 240 trees are a nice test. We have three varieties of uh, trees. Uh, we have there on the original root, uh, cherries that are coming from the pit. These are coming, uh, these are planted on an, uh, uh, a very small root so the trees wouldn't grow too, uh, too high. And then we have them on Prumus avium over there. They grow faster, but they grow higher. So we have, cut, we have to cut them faster. The whole field that you see until the fence there going uh, in the back uh, where the people were walking, wow. the fence over there. So in the whole part over there, we'll put uh, scarbex uh, cherry trees. Wow. Oh. That's an incredible plot. You've got a lot of opportunities. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, work here. <laughs> You see, if people say that lambic beer uh, would uh, smell or taste like goat, yeah. train your nose. <laughs> this one here has a particular smell. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one goat. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hold that while I take the <laughs>